three is display data. So we're going to take a look at categorical data, continuous data, and discrete data. So categorical data is data that is either organized or named, is organized or named by categories. So for example, um, which fruit do you like the best? Do you like apple or pears or orange? Oranges. Oranges. Okay, so as you can see here, apple's not a number, it's a category, or pears or oranges. These are three categories, okay, versus numerical data, which is uh, data that's organized by numbers. Okay, continuous data and discrete data. Continuous data can take on any number. And when we say any number, we think of decimals. Okay, so um, example, time, height, weight, lots of measurements. And the reason is because uh, tonight you're not going to go to sleep and you're five foot two and tomorrow you're, you're going to wake up and you're going to be five foot four. It doesn't jump like that. It's very gradual and it hits every single decimal in between. Discrete data is um, data that can only take on, so it can only take on certain values. Okay, so an example of this is like a basketball score. So you can't say, oh, I scored 3.25 baskets today. That doesn't make sense. So basketball score or even like a score in a hockey game, football game, okay? Um, the other thing, uh, money. Money is only two decimals. So you can't have more than two decimals worth of money because like it goes to the second decimal for pennies or cents. So you can have like, well, I have $12 and 8259852 cents. Doesn't make sense. Okay. So data can be displayed in several different ways. And we've learned these in like grade one, pie and circle graphs, pictographs, histograms, charts, tables, and bar graphs. And we're going to take a look at those. Okay, so what is a bar graph? A bar graph is a diagram, so just like a graph, so a diagram, where the numbers, numbers, I put number sign, um, so the numerical values of variables are represented, so the numbers um, or the values are represented by the height or length of lines. By the height, or we should say bars, or length of the bars. Okay, and what is a circle graph? Okay, this is a diagram. So like it's a circle diagram, circle diagram. Which the circle is divided into sectors, so divided into sectors that represent a proportion of the whole. Okay, so just going over this, bar graph, you have your x value, you have your y value, and say it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever this value is, we're looking at, okay, so there's one, maybe apple, two people like pears, so we'll call this fruit, just making it up, 
k and up the side number of people. Okay, title could be favorite group. Okay, uh, four people like uh, pineapple. Okay, two people like bananas, and so on. Okay, so just like a really, really quick preview of a bar graph, circle graph. Okay, so a circle is 360 degrees. Okay, we need to break this into different proportions. So maybe a quarter. So, oops. So we would do like 0 0.25 times 360. So that many degrees for the quarter would, um, of people like maybe apples. Okay, and an eighth of the people like pineapples, and then an eighth of the people like bananas, and half the people like mangoes. Okay, so that one's just proportion, and it's a proportion of the pie uh, that represents the whole, the proportion of people that like a certain fruit, for example. So that's all done. Now let's make an actual circle graph. So again, dexter's expenses can be the title of this circle graph off of DE. Okay, so just to remind everyone, so in a circle, a quarter of the circle is actually going to be 90 degrees, okay? And I do that just so that I can base how big my chunk should be. And then if we divide that by two, it'd be 45 each, okay? So I'm looking around here, and between lunch and transportation, it's like 40 and 43. So quite possibly... This could be lunch, and this could be transportation. Okay, so those two are done. Now, entertainment is 54. So entertainment is going to be just above, instead of being like a quarter, it's going to be just above it. So let's put that as entertainment. So that one's done too. Okay. Um... Rent is a almost 80%, so, oh, sorry, 80 degrees, so instead of being like a full quarter, it's just going to be less than a quarter. So instead of being from this line to this dotted line, it's just going to be a little bit less, so that's going to be rent. And then let's break up the last one into cell phone and clothing. So most of that's going to be clothing, and then 25 degrees for cell phone. So let's go clothing, and then cell phone. Okay, and that's how you make a circle graph. So again, bar graphs show uh, the amount for each category, and the bars do not touch. Okay, and the circle graph shows the proportion of, um, for example, in this case, Dexter's expenses, like total expenses that each of these expenses took up. Okay, I just pasted these three questions um, over just the bottom here. So let's talk about this. Which graph displays Dexter's expenses? Just by your answer. Well, um, specifically, the actual expenses are displayed in the bar graph because you can look up the side and see what number correlates to each of the expenses. Whereas the circle graph only gives you the percentage, or so like the proportion of his total expenses. So definitely for... Um, Number one here, it's Dexter's, uh, sorry, it's the bar graph. Okay, when is a bar graph the best choice to display data? This is when we want to, when we want to actually see um, the numbers, to see the specific numbers or values. Whereas the circle graph is when we want to see um, the, per the percentage or proportion. Portion of a whole. So the whole in this case is all of Dexter's expenses. And we want to see the proportion of um, his percentages that are going to each uh, expense. Okay, so now what is a histogram? So a histogram is very similar to a bar graph, but the difference is that a histogram uh, groups data in ranges. Okay, so let's go straight into an example. Um, 
Oh, and just one more thing. Uh, histograms allow us to see like the, the shape of the graph or like the distribution in the graph. Okay, so example two histograms. Data was collected on a class of 30 students regarding the average number of hours spent weekly watching a screen. So whether that screen be a TV, a computer, a cell phone, an iPad, etc. Complete the tally below for the number of students in each interval and determine the frequency. Okay, complete the frequency histogram, fill in the appropriate axis labels and title. No, histograms record continuous data and there are no spaces between the bars. Okay, so that's the difference between a histogram and a bar graph. So there are no spaces between the bars and it records continuous data, the data on the bottom there. So let's go through the data together. So um, let's go, this is how I do it. I go 5, 20, 27. So 5 goes here, 20, and 27. 20, 18, 19. 20, 18, 19. 26, 17. 26, 17. Oh, 14, 2, 3, 9. 14, 2, 3, 9. 7, 10, 13, 13. 7, 10, 13, 13. 22, 29. 22, 29 and then 33 25 33 25 okay so I just want to make a note the note here see the squared brackets that means that it includes that number so this um, this interval right here includes the number 21 and includes the number 25 so it goes 21 22 23 24 25 okay now let's uh, chart the frequency so 3 3 3 5 2 4 Okay, and if we complete a frequency histogram, okay, it'd be the x and the y, this would be the interval, and this would be the frequency, okay, and um, we could call this watching a screen or time spent watching a screen. Okay, I just put that over there because the underline. Okay. So this interval would, well, would be 0 to 5. This one would be 6 to 10. 11 to 15. 16 to 20. 21 to 25. And then 26 plus. Okay? So we'd have to, we have to chart 3, 3, 3, 5, 2, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 3, 3. Four, five, six, five, two, four. And of course, these can all be colored in, but all of the bars must touch. So this is our frequency histogram. And that's it. Okay, so I'm going to turn the page and we're going to answer some questions about this frequency histogram. Okay, so just in general, when comparing histograms to bar graphs, what is the same? Okay, so uh, they both have bars. Okay, and they both have like numbers or the frequency we can put up the side of the, let's call it the y axis. Okay, and what is different? So, um, bar graphs do not touch. Whereas histograms do. So histograms, the bars touch. And histograms have intervals. Whereas bar graphs are categorical. Oh, and there's one more question. When would you use a histogram over all other means of displaying data? This is when you're dealing with an interval.
and it can be either be an interval that's already set or it can be a, a data with a wide range and then you put it into intervals. data. So uh, we have a chart here, it's called favorite type of movie, and it's in five different categories, comedy, action, romance, drama, and science fiction. And if we take a look at the bar graph below, and we notice that it's a bar graph because uh, the, gra the bars are not touching, and uh, we see the categories on the bottom, right? Uh, this should be comedy here, okay? So let's actually analyze this graph. Okay, so which type of movie is most popular? And uh, we want to take a look at the frequency. And of course, like the higher the bar, the bigger the bar, or the taller the bar, the more popular or the, uh, the more number of people like it. So if we look at romance, it actually has the tallest bar. So romance is the most popular type of movie. And least popular is right here, drama. Okay, drama. Because it's the shortest bar. Now, does the least popular movie mean that no, uh, that students do not like this type of movie? Okay, so students don't necessarily, and you can write this down, students don't necessarily not like drama movies. They may just prefer, prefer romance or action or comedy before they would watch a drama. So it's just your favorite type of movie. Maybe a drama is everybody's second favorite type of movie. Um, it would still reflect that drama has a low number of people choosing it as the favorite. Okay. And how many students said romance was their favorite movie? Uh, we already said this, it was six. How many people, how many students participated in the survey? So we can either get this from the graph or we can actually get it from just these numbers right here. Um, we just add all of these up. So four, five, six, one, and four. I should add these. Six and one is seven. 16 plus four, 20 people. So 20 people were actually surveyed. If you actually take a look at the graph and, and you didn't use the chart at all to help you, then you can just, you can say, okay, comedy's four, this one's five, this one's six, one, and four. So you can just uh, create these or write them, record these numbers independently. So independent of the chart. Okay, final question. The following histogram shows the heights of 21 students in the class grouped into five inch groups. Okay, when it says five inch groups, we know that the interval is here. Um, this one, so this one consists of the numbers 55, 56, 57, 58, and 59. And this 60, because we see a 60 also right here, we can assume that it's not in the first, like the interval on the left, but it's more in the interval on the right, okay? So this this one starts including 60 up until 65, but doesn't actually include 65. Okay, so how many students were greater than or equal to 60 inches tall? Okay, so 60 starts here. So let's go ahead and let's count the number of students and let's record it. So between 55 and 60 is six students. And then it's five. And then it was four, three, is that two still? Yeah, two and then one. So great, uh, greater than or equal to. So we include this bar right here. Five, four, three, two, one. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 students. How many students were less than 70 inches? So, you know what? I just noticed this. These intervals are not in order. So greater than or equal to 60 inches tall, let's actually just redo that one. 60 inches tall, we'll do five, 
three, two, and one. Five, three, two, and one. That gives us 11. So less than 70 inches. Less than 70 inches. Um, so 55 to 60, yep. So let's write down six. 60 to 65, yep. 50 to 55. 70 to 75, nope. 65 to 70, yes. And then 75 to 80, no. So all these people are less than 70 inches. 11, 13, 17 people. Okay, how many students were between 60 and 65 inches? We just have to look that up here, five. And could you answer how many students were 60 inches tall? Okay, the answer here is no, because we are given intervals. So if we take a look at the interval of 60, it's from 60 to 65. So all five, of course five, of these individuals could have been 61 inches tall. All of them could have been 60 inches tall, but we don't actually know because we're not getting the data um, in a chart. We're only giving that data in an interval. So no, we're not able to actually pinpoint.